love you. Bakugo stared, speechless, as he confessed to him under the cherry blossom, diplomas in hand. His throat locked and his tongue stalled as he wordlessly gaped at you. Around words? No, he didn't even know what to say. The wind blew the petals of the branches, choking him out of his temper once they obscured his vision for one precious moment. He still couldn't find the word to respond. He didn't know how. All his life, he hadn't cared for affection, only victory. Anyone vibing for his affection, someone crying, humiliated if they were lucky. The hungry love letter cramped in their fist as he moved on with his life without a care. But this, he couldn't bear letting go. Bakugo didn't know how to hold on either. For the past three years, people came to know you as the other half, the one who kept him in line, yet helped him live to even greater heights. The one who could withstand him with a ring glare with a smile. The one he kept by his side. For the past three years, your relationship remained ambiguous, this ambiguity becoming the open circuit of your year. Too close to be just friend, yet not quite lover either. A deeper connection that neither of you dug into, content with your dynamic. Until now. A part of him loathed that you were the one to make the leap when he didn't even know what to say. But a little voice in the corner of his mind told him that maybe, just maybe, this would finally get his ass moving. He smiled, softly, slowly, knowingly. He had to remind himself to breathe. <laughs> you don't have to answer me right away. I'll wait for you as long as you need. And with that, you were gone. Bakugo was left staring at your back as you walked away from him and, as he would later discover, out of his life for the next two years. Hey, Bakugo! How are you holding up? Who knew Lisa took an offer in America? Did you know? I mean, none of us did, but... Ah, Don's face. It's been a month since graduation, and three weeks since you revealed you were entering America's pro hero since the day before you left. You've always been terrible at goodbyes. Why was that you decided to confess at graduation? Because you knew you were leaving? No, I didn't know when I fuck off. Rude! The cherry blossoms have long since fallen, slowly unfurling virgin leaves, replacing the pink blossom under the shining leg spring sun. Of course, not even this beautiful scene could improve his mood when he was too compatible with these idiots. Their agencies were working together, so he had no choice but to go along with it. Once he gets his own agency, he swears. Back at the senpai! A pair of second gears clad in the UA uniform called that to him waving. Ah, he recognized this too. Stuck to him like leashes after he spoke to Class 1A as one of the big three, pestering him endlessly about all the crazy shit that happened this first year and asking him to mentor them. You were the only buffer that kept him from blowing up in their face. It's ground zero to you extra. They laughed him off, these brats, and walked up, jokingly asking for their autograph. Kaminari took them upon it, shoving the paper in his face after. After, admittedly very little bitching and glaring, he snatched the notepad from Kaminari's hands, signed it, and sent them on their way, letting his gaze linger on the pair as they elbowed each other and geeked out over the signature they just got. In a brief flash of curiosity, he tried to imagine you two during your first year, walking back to the dorm after class, but something felt... off. The atmosphere wasn't right. The image he tried to lay over the two students, ending up washed out and mishappened. An empty feeling sank into his bones at the thought of having that same disconnect with you. Ah, feels nice, doesn't it? Kaminari went ignored. Bakugo, still staring at the retreating back of the excited second gears, a devilish grin splits Kaminari's face in two once he followed Bakugo's line of sight. Oh, what is it, Kacha? Remising of the old good days already? Kaminari teasing tone ripped him out of his thought and Bakugo growled, shoving the blonde's face away as he continued stomping down the patrol road. I won't say it again, Pikachu, fuck off! Lee 
listen to them in Harry Chard for the third time in a row. It took Bakugo a second to translate the headline from English to Japanese in his head, but he found himself smiling down at his phones when the word clicked. He expected nothing less. It was you, after all. The US hero new logo faded away with a click of his phone locking, pocketing it as he swung open the door with a loud bang. Would it kill you to visit more, Brad? And how many times do I have to tell you, stop slamming the fucking door open? Ah, oh, whatever I had. Bakugo snapped back, dropping the box of pastry on the counter before slumping into his heat at the dining table. Masaru looked up from his laptop and smiled at his son, something behind the mirth in his eyes that Bakugo couldn't pick out. Huh, <laughs> someone's in a good mood, huh? Was he? Yeah, you could say that. It's been a little over a year since that day, and the both of you have paved your own path in the ear industry since then. Bakugo, finally, finally, after a year of busting his ass and making connection, went independent and started his own agency. Now, he only answered to himself and, well, the Hair Republic Safety Commission, and didn't have to be held by any ERG. An added bonus was that summer was always good to him. To villain, not so much. You, the headline spoke for itself. I guess. I'm glad. Your mother making a favorite for lunch, since this is your first visit ever since you opened your agency. Masaru said, and there was that damn look again. The soft clink of the plate being set down in front of him cut back a go off before he could question him, and the flow of the meal swept any opportunity he would have had. He found himself silently watching his parents' interaction as they unfold in front of him and easy back and forth, flowing smoothly from years of practice. Bakugo nearly dropped his ball as an old memory blindsided him. An image of you, offering him food in the UA cafeteria, with a smile flitted across my eyes. He shoved another piece of tofu in his mouth before the thought had the chance to linger. The rest of lunch went smoothly, I mean, as smoothly as it could be with him and his mother in the same room. And he bid his goodbye once the dishes were done and the end of his lunch break inched closer. <laughs> I'm rooting for you, Katsuki. The man in question shot a perplexed look at his father before shutting the door behind him. First, the really knowing look, and now this confusing old man. He started down the path back to the agency for patrol, letting his gaze swept over the bustling lunchtime traffic. Normally, he would have been keeping an eyes out of any trouble since apparently people loved staring shit when he was covertly off duty. Instead, his mind wandered as he observed the people around him. People watching. Was that what this is called? He found himself doing this more and more often lately, as dangerous as it was to let his mind wander when he was out and about. An elderly couple tottering their way out of the corner store with their arm linked, the married couple further headed swinging their squinting child in between them, a young pair giggling like loaf bird on a honeymoon as they walked down the sidewalk. His eyes skipped over the other pedestrians and bounced from couple to couple, subconsciously trying to make sense of the tree wood that has stubbornly stuck themselves to his mind for the past year. Normally, it would have brushed off the thought, plaguing him for the sake of his work, but this just won't leave him alone. They left him in a confused haze, a void slowly hitting a hole in his chest and leaving him feeling incomplete. To top it off, he kept seeing you in every couple that passed his line of sight. Every time we saw you two instead of the couple on a date of the married pair holding their child's hand, the void closed for a brief moment before expanding even wider the second the image dissolves, leaving him with only a deep sense of longing, making a home for itself in the void. Except he had no idea what he was longing for. He knew you were okay and that was enough. Was it really enough? It was like he was trying to couple together a puzzle with no reference and some of the ends cut off blindly snapping pieces together and hoping it worked out 
loosely forming ideas, certainties, what ifs, all trying to be linked together by a single man that, as much as I hate to say it, had no idea what the fuck he was doing, and it would be a cold in hell before he asked for help. Shouts and screams snapped him out of his days, and he glowed at the villain crushing out of a nervous door. Spark crackled and burst into blazing heat in his palm, evaporating the melancholy haze in his head before to focus on the poor soul that had crossed his path. The half-finished puzzle slung back to the corner of his mind, waiting for the next time he would pick up the pieces and try again. I would like to get to know each other more, Bakagasan. On a date, maybe? He paused mid-stride and stared at his colleague in barely concealed shock, who was too busy hiding her flushed face in her scarf to look back at him. Is not this moment barely two weeks? Then she suddenly hits him with this. Yes, he was caught off guard. Sue him. They were on a coffee run, for God's sake. I mean, I know her agency are only collaborating for the short time, but I think we could make this work, don't you? Whatever she was trying to say was cut off by a strong gust of wine nearly blowing the scar of her neck. The autumn chill, the wine carrying along with it, wasn't what made Bakugo feel oddly cold, despite the scrawling coffee in his hands. No, the chill spilled into his being the moment she had opened her mouth, a certain dread at the thought of what would happen if he said yes. If he said yes, he would lose you. Suddenly, he was eating again. Diplomas in hands and wearing a uniform he had cast off long ago instead of his coat. He blinked and he was back, still staring at the flustered woman next to him as the dying leaves fell around them. Why? Why? Why can he only see your face? Why could he only see the pink cherry blossom of the time past instead of the blazing red leaves the wine had picked up? He didn't know the reason. He only knew that. This wasn't what he wanted. No, I don't. What did he want? Walking into his office to see four people staring back at him with unbearable expression was the last thing he expected today. Oh, back ago. I'm so sorry. What? Why was Mina looking at him like that? Kirishima, Kaminari, and Sarah too. Did he miss something? Ah, uh, look. I just came in, so whatever the fuck happened, you need to spit it out. And you need to spit it out now. He slammed his bag on his deck and glowered at the group staring at him with... Was that pity? He didn't need fucking pity. He needed information. What the hell was going on? It's... Out of the new bra. He stared at Kirishima for a second, two seconds, the dot tasking longer that they should have to connect. News. News. He hasn't checked the newest news yet. Ignoring the four bombing feeling bleeding into his hole, he rushed to take out his phone from his coat pocket, nearly dropping it off for mumbling. And he pulled up the US Hero New website as fast as his numb finger would let him. The little loading bar was testing him. He swears. Oh. Suddenly, there's no stoking into his coat, and hair wasn't so cold compared to the chilling horror that froze him to his very core. The words stopped moving for the second, his eyes burning from how long he was staring at those little pixels spelling out his word crumbling. Listener, critically injured in a battle, recovery, answered him. Almost immediately, his eyes zipped through the article over and over and what was the new detail? Did no one really know anything? He'd have to make calls, send emails, put strings. There's someone in the US he knows. Maybe they would... Kugo. Bakugo, snap out of it. Was he being shaking? Oh, he was. Suddenly... Kaminari's face was up with it, and he almost had in from the shock. Dude, we lost you there for a second. You read the article like 20 times, are you okay? He growled, and actually had butted Kaminari this time. Growing at him, he stumbled back with a bump on his forehead. 
I should have expected that. My bad. I'm fine. What happened was unfortunate, but there's nothing we can do. Now get to work. We have a case to work on. That's cruel, man. We all know how close you were with listener. Don't you think you should care a little more? Kirishima shut up with a single glare, valuing it's done more than whatever message it was trying to convey. Care. He did care. There was so many things that he had to be done, and he had no idea how much time he had left, but this... This was his problem, and no one else's. Maybe you should dry off and warm up to, you know, make sure you don't get sick. Sarah waved in the direction of the locker room, and Bakugo shoulder passed him wordlessly, snatching up his back and ignoring the water stream he dipped into the carpet. Is it really okay? Kaminari whispered the moment he saw Bakugo turn the corner. I think we already know the answer to that. Everyone in his office nodded in agreement with Mina. This was going to be rough. Several hours later, found him in a hospital of all places, speaking with a doctor about one of the patients that was involved with the case's agency was tasked with. Wait outside her room, they said. I let her know that you need to speak with her. Waiting was the last thing he wanted to do right now. Waiting meant he had to sit still, which meant he had time to think. Waiting meant worrying. His mood was already sore from seeing all the happy couple curling up under the pre-Christmas snow on his way here. What would have actually left him with a gaping hole in his heart, instead met there curled in his core and said a million and what what ifs rattling around inside his head. He needed to calm down. He couldn't question anyone when he's in the mood. Please, how are you listening to this? Hear my prayer. Bakugo looked up at the sound of someone praying. His eyes, stomping at the side of a man kneeling at someone's bedside, with their limp hand clasping his. The waning bands on their fingers glammed in the bright artificial light. He quickly cast his eye back down to the linoleum at his feet. But it was too late. The headline running in his head for the hundredth time today. The image of the man praying on his wife's recovery kept playing in his mind like a broken record and, against his will, slowly changed to the image of you. Limp and wounded in a too big hospital bed connected to turbine and wires with too many machines beeping. He felt sick, the dread climbing its way into the void in his chest and ripping it off to make home for itself. Of course, it would have seen you in the hospital bell, just like it would Kirishima or anybody else. No, this wasn't the same. He was crumbling for the puzzle piece now. His mind, going into overdrive to figure out if this wasn't the same, then what the hell was it? Ground Zero, sir. She's ready to see you. The physician pulled him out of his speculating, and he nodded, clearing the sudden lump out of his throat and slipping into the patient's room. A puzzle piece clicked into the pace the moment he saw her sitting up in the hospital bed, awake. He wanted you to be okay. He wanted you. Bakugo found himself praying as he laid in bed that night. The steady ticking of his clock brought him before his alarm did. A rhythmic metronome that dug into the hair drum and yanking out of his deep sleep. Bakugo sat up with a groan glaring holes in the damn thing like it had personally offended him for waking him up so early, mocking him with the time he was not supposed to be up at. 4.27 a.m. Wonderful. Is going back to sleep an option? The restless energy that threatened to shake him out of his skin, if it's too much as his eldest breath was answer enough. And he swung his leg out of bed with a frustrated half to go by his morning routine. An early start it is. The minutes passed as he went through the motion, coming back to his senses as he pulled out his phone while the coffee brewed and opened the app with practice ease. Ease is again from opening it almost thrice daily for a month. New hero, villain arrest, villain arrest, hero scandal, villain arrest, cream ring, burst, hero scandal. No news of you. There hadn't been news of you for the past four months, and Bakugo was slowly losing it. 
All the people he reached out to give him a vague answer or dead hands and only confirmed one thing. You were alive. At the time, it felt like Atlas had taken the sky back to carry on his one shoulder so Bakugo could finally breathe, only to depend back on him the moment his relief wore off and he started trying to fill in the blanks. You were alive, but were you okay? Were you in a coma? Wounded beyond repair? Put out of commission? He shut off his phone, cutting off his train of thoughts, and filled his mug before making his way off the balcony. Kelo's hand finger slowly traced over the book, neatly placed on the bookshelf next to the balcony window. The early down light bathing the title in a soft glow. He posed at the sunlight glittered off of a certain title printed in gold. Another memory rose from the depth as he read the title over, this time from the hellish first year at UA. He let it in this time. I don't fucking want to read some fucking romance story, okay? He spit the words out like they were falls crawling into the air as you walk beside him, the book in your hand. Come on! It's really good you don't even know what it's about. I glanced down, hurting your puppy eyes, and he badly concealed. Ugh. What is it about then? You know, it's a story about a girl that had to learn about emotion over her and the other had to wait for her. <laughs> he had shoved it into his hands anyway, and he never found a chance to give it back. A hesitant pause it that he slipped the book out of his face, wincing at the dust that bewildered off the cover. No harm in picking this up to rig along with coffee, as long as it kept him from checking the news again. His subconscious laughed at him as he picked the puzzle again, slowly trying to piece it together as he opened the book to the hidden March page. There was time for a quick read, right? <laughs> wrong. So, so wrong. He ended up becoming immersed in the book, so drawn by it, something about the story couldn't quite put a finger on it, that he nearly ended up being late to work. Nearly. Bakuga Katsuki didn't do late. He swung the door open right as the clock swung 8.50, brushing cherry blossom out of his hair with a quiet stumble as he walked into his agency. He stopped short at the familiar, two familiar side of his friends grouped together, whispering to each other. Urgently, what do we do? Just tell him. It just can blow up because he decided to not believe him? <laughs> yeah. Secrets. Again. The last time this happened, uh, nope. Not going through that fucking song and dance again. Decide not to believe what? They stiffened and shocked and turned towards him with cheap smile. His scroll deepened, the scene reflecting one of his past winter tours to comfort. Hey, Bakugo, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> Kirishima, Mina, and Cyril all groaned in unison as Bakugo cocked to that bro at Kamina with grateful to cover up. It endured him for now. I fucking work here. What the fuck are you dumb shit doing next to the receptionist's desk? They flaunted for an answer, and the receptionist himself stepped in with a polite paper thin smile. You have a guest waiting in your office, sir. I sent them headed for you. That's all you idiot had. A pointy look needed to say in the first place. <sighs> he resisted to your side at the people he benignly called his friend. Fixing the bag on his shoulder, he turned on his heel to start on the direction of his office. <sighs> it's probably the fucking passion of the winter case again. Ah, <sighs> see ya. He made a mental note to give a receptionist a raise, especially since he had to deal with this idiot on the daily. They watched him disappear into the hallway in the stunned silence, Sarah eventually breaking the silence to weakly voice one question they all knew they were thinking. Who's going to tell him it is and this is Nakamura? The receptionist heaved a quiet sigh as he sat back down at his desk. He didn't get paid enough for this. I told you, Mrs. Nakamura, we'll let you know if there is any update. Bakugo was that on his tongue once he stepped into his office, his back dropping to the ground with a dull thought that he didn't even acknowledge. You're not, Mrs. Nakamura. I'm not. <laughs> a soft laugh. How long has it been since he heard it last? 
You watch as you slowly stood up from where you had been watching the cherry blossom outside, not missing the slight winds of the bandage you were swatching as you did so. It was the only thing holding him back from crushing you in a hug right now there and there. Wait, a uh, hug? Since when? Back ago, at the sense to get himself together and pick his back up from the floor, kicking the door shut as he did. Heart beating out of his chest, he walked over to meet you in the middle of his office. He felt the void in his chest filling, but there was something that was keeping him from completely healing over. He knew what it was, but how would he... You're here. I'm here. Ta-da! <laughs> his head was spinning. You were here. You were more bent into that skin, but you were here. You were... okay. The weight lifted off his shoulder again, and despite the relief floating him, he managed to choke his response out, wincing at his tone. Why? Now? Uh, well, <laughs> you probably saw, but my husk sounded to me. Akago couldn't help the incredulous snort that slipped tossing his bag onto the table. That's putting it slightly. And my contract with the agency was almost over anyway, so I got sent home for the rest of my treatment and physical therapy. That's, um... Good. They were worried, I had to say. What were they? What were they? Hurry up, you idiots! Um, I know it's sudden, but uh, do you, like, maybe remember? Um, <clears throat> at graduation? Of course, you would beat him to it again. I remember, and I think I have an answer. His ears felt hot as you laugh again. But this time, he saw the tenseness in your shoulder, one from nerves. A step closer, it felt right, and suddenly he was in front of you, nearly buzzing with anticipation. You think... Um, let it on me then. You tried to give him a reassuring gleam. The sight of you with the cherry blossom outside painting an old familiar image. His breath caught before he could get his word out. His heart beating the bread he would have used out of his lungs and no, not again, no, now. This time, this time, he would have the word to answer. It took me to cut them here to get this for you so you better fucking listen and listen well. Hmm, I'm um, listening back ago. How true little word could feel so far in on his tongue was beyond him, but deep down, he had a feeling that it was right. Your brilliant smile had to make everything worth it anyway, and he felt the longing void in his chest finally linked itself together. Another puzzle piece clicked into place, placed by your own hand this time. The puzzle was far from finished, but at least now he had you by his side to help him put it all together. He still wasn't entirely sure what love was, but he was sure of one thing. He wanted to learn with you. I'm gonna make you